Welcome, lovely internet friends, to my office on the floor, where today we are going to be eating chocolate and talking about a very frustrating issue, but one that is very much worth talking about. So in my escapades on the internet, in my content creation over on TikTok, I follow a lot of really cool people, one of whom is this gal. Her name is Tia B. Stokes. You may well recognize her face from her TikToks and YouTube videos and Instagram talking about dancing her way through cancer. On April 24th, 2020, Tia was diagnosed with cancer, had to go into the hospital during the height of COVID when no one could be with her, had to leave her family, lost her mom during that period, and spent over a year fighting for her life. Pretty recently, she went into remission and was able to ring that bell. And in the last couple months, as she has been celebrating being alive and going through this fight and continuing with some treatments, her comment section has begun to shift just a little bit. And that, my dear friends, is what we are talking about today. Is there chocolate in my teeth? Hopefully not. So it's not gonna be a shock to anyone listening to learn that our society places a lot of value on your body, on how you physically look, on the shape and the texture and the makeup of your skin and what lies beneath it. I don't think many people disagree that we focus on this to a very unhealthy extent. The rise of eating disorders, disordered ways of viewing our bodies, diet culture, it's all very troubling, but it is a fact in our society. That if you fit the definition of conventionally attractive, that you are gonna be seen and treated differently. So, a couple months ago, I started to see Tia's comment section shift a little bit, and then she started making videos about it. People were commenting that she looked like she'd gained weight. They were commenting, she's fat now. I don't know who thinks that's okay to comment, but let's move past that. And with utter grace and respect to others, absolute class, Tia responded to these comments with a few different videos and Instagram posts talking about, you know, this physical change, talking about being on a very high dose of prednisone that was helping her stay alive, and that one of the side effects for that is often weight gain. Yes. Prednisone is not a fun medicine, but it is keeping me alive. But these comments have continued on and looking at it from an outside party, it seems like a very accurate meter, a barometer, if you will, on our society of what we value and what we don't value. So let's recap this for just a second. Here's a woman who has spent a year, probably the hardest year of her life, fighting through something terrifying, something that takes millions of people's lives, having to be isolated away from her family, poked and prodded, go through significant loss. And amazingly, she has made it through that. Her body has gotten her through that. But as soon as it does that, and as soon as it starts to change and look a little bit different than how it did before, suddenly the tone of the support starts to shift a little bit. Because we deem weight gain as a society as this awful bad, very bad, no good, I've said that way too many times, but you get what I'm meaning, as a bad thing. Uh, people see fit to comment on this body that has allowed her to live, that has allowed her to survive, suggesting that it is wrong and it is a bad thing. And the whole, in my opinion, bullshit argument of uh, I'm commenting on your weight because I care about your health, that doesn't even, you can't, like you don't even have a foot to stand on, get it, a foot, a foot to stand on, in this argument because this is all very monitored by her doctors, right? Let me just repeat the fact that when people say that in comment sections, I think it's an absolute cop out, but if someone was going to make that argument, you can't can't because doctors are very involved in her body and how it is working right now. Which brings us to the very real fact that there is a faction of people out there that see her body as now wrong. Now that it has survived hell and back, but it doesn't look the way that some people think it should look anymore. And she's talked about her own struggle with this, her own struggle with body image, because I honestly don't know anyone who is immune to struggling with the way that they physically view themselves and having shame and difficulty in that. Um, I am one of those people. I dealt with an eating disorder from age 15 to about 20. I was able to get past a lot of the unhealthy behaviors associated with that, but a lot of the unhealthy thoughts still weasel their way into my mind, um, sometimes on a daily basis. This past year has been weirdly difficult for how I see my body. Uh, I really struggle not to hate it. I really struggle not to critique it. I really struggle not to like try to punish myself with exercise if I feel like I've eaten too much, which I'm legitimately embarrassed to say out loud. I worry about how I'm perceived and seen because in my mind, my physical form is still linked to my worth as a human being, to my worth and my value in society. Now, do I actually believe those two things are tied? Do I actually think if I gained 50 or 100 pounds, I would be worth any less as a 
person? No, absolutely not. But society's subconscious programming sure tells us that, doesn't it? Beauty standards of what is considered ideal have shifted over time. Right now we're in a phase where being athletic and or skinny, you get the stamp of approval from society as a whole. Okay. And if your body, which allows you to survive, which in Tia's case has gotten her through hell, uh, has helped her fight through something that very easily could have taken her life, that does take the lives of so many people, when that body responds to treatments that she is being given and starts to change a little bit what it looks like, suddenly some of the support and compassion and kind words start to melt away. And honestly, I don't know how useful it would be to make a video saying this is absolutely stupid and makes me sick and very angry but I am gonna say those things. Being in the social media landscape as I am uh, far too often, I see comment sections of men, women, non-binary people, however you identify, just being flooded and filled with uh, shameful, awful comments about how they look or don't look. And as someone who has felt the effect of society's pressure to be a certain way every day of my adult life, I'm really deeply over it. So many times in my life that I have not done something or I have made myself as a person in some way smaller or not attended an event or not wore something I wanted to or not gone after a dream that I had because of something that I thought about my body. I've thought about the literal countless hours that I have wasted being concerned about numbers that are sewn onto pieces of clothing, garments, sizes, being legitimately stressed about that, devoting so much of my mental energy to it. And I'm so mad going back to a video from a, a week or two ago where I was talking about being angry about everything. I'm so mad that we live in a society that has allowed people to grow up this way and think this way, that has bred a culture that thinks that it is okay to comment mean things on the videos of someone who has just survived cancer, whose body has gotten them through it. It is heartbreaking to me that our young people and our older people are subject and have to waste their lives thinking about these standards because as someone who is very aware of my body from a surgery and chronic pain and chronic illness perspective, there are so many more important things to worry about and think about than what your body looks like. And I say that as someone who worries and thinks about it way too much. This is a fight I am actively engaged in. But seeing what was happening with Tia online and the comments that she was getting and the, like I said, very classy, very lovely response videos she was making to these people, saying comments that frankly had no place to ever be said, just really drove home the point for me that we are very lost when it comes to this subject. Like, I realize it's been this way for a while, but how have we gotten to the point where commenting at all on the shape, the size, the makeup of someone's body, especially someone who has just gone through something so catastrophic and life-altering with their body, where we think that's okay, where we think that's like a, an okay thing to do. This seeps into everything. Like I have had so many conversations with friends who have gone through major life events, gained a few pounds, and are now absolutely crushed. They do not fit into the same size of jeans that they did a year or two before. That comment is in no way shaming them for thinking that because I know how we get there, right? I know the society that we live in, but the fact that we are programmed to think that way, that we are programmed to focus not on our mental health after we've gone through something so drastic, but on the fact that you're no longer a size six, you're now a size eight, and oh my God, what are people gonna think? The fact that anyone would think anything about that ever is astonishing to me. And speaking on a personal level, as I was going through major surgeries, um, losing my leg and then going through it again because I had a fall and it messed things up the first time, those were very present thoughts in my head as I was like laying in the hospital recovering of being like, well, I still shouldn't eat too much even when I'm in the hospital recovering from surgery because of the visual impact it could have on my body. Like I didn't give in to those thoughts, but still they were there and that just pisses me off. <laughs> but I just wanted to bring up this story in particular because it's really heartbreaking to see. And I hope that by identifying these things, by looking at them and by saying as a culture, wow, this is really messed up, that maybe things can begin to change. We are all infinitely so much more valuable and sacred and incredible than the skin we inhabit, but even that is beautiful and worthy. So Tia, if you happen to be watching this, I think you're delightful. I think you're an absolute warrior. You're a rock star. Keep doing what you're doing. You're an amazing girl. And to you watching this video, if you are someone like me who also struggles with thoughts of, of your physical appearance, of your physical body, of the skin that you are in, know that you're not alone and that I am also working towards 
towards a mindset and a world in which we do not have such a focus on this because gosh darn it, it is not what really matters and we just place so much focus on it and that makes me sad. So I'm gonna continue to work towards changing it and I hope that you will join me. Thank you so much my delightful audience for listening today. I truly appreciate it. If this resonates with you, I would love it if you'd share this video. If you have a thought, a comment, any feedback, please leave it down below. I would love to hear your responses. Hit the like button if you feel so inclined to my amazing patrons over on Patreon. Thank you for supporting these videos, for allowing me to do what I do here. I couldn't do it without your generosity and I'm truly grateful. To you watching this video right now, thank you so much for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me today. You could be anywhere else in the world doing anything else and you chose to hang out with me for a few minutes and I truly appreciate that. I love you guys, I'm thinking about you and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Have you heard from the sky, all about